So welcome to episode two of our grafting series. Episode one, of course, was the top cleft graft. And today's topic is really closely related. It's the saddle graft. Now, to review, a top cleft graft is you take a scion and you carve a V in the bottom uh, part, and then you make a cut on the rootstock and just take a uh, razor blade or any uh, grafting knife and make a cut down into the uh, the stem of the rootstock and then the V slides into that. So the saddle graft is exactly opposite. Uh, your scion is going to have the cut down the middle and the rootstock is something that you're going to carve to a point. Uh, it's going to be like an upside down uh, V. Uh, it's uh, so that part is uh, usually I carve that first because then I know how deep to make the cut in the scion. One of the things that I, I like to do with this particular graft is get the scion as close as possible to the, you know, the width of the scion to the width of the rootstock. So that one is just a little bit larger and I've got a big selection here. This one looks, looks like it's the same diameter as the rootstock. So this is going to be the scion that I work with. You can see this is, is pretty flexible. I could use that, but I think I'll go right below that, you know, where the top of this growth spurt was and right above that and cut the top part off. And uh, this is where all these leaves are. It's just a little bit, e a little bit uh, harder to make a good cut. So I'll just cut that um, off. And so I have sort of easy wood to work with. These little bumps and stuff in the development of the wood. So this particular cut is a little bit awkward because I'm used to having a scion and just cutting it cut over like this and it's just a little bit more difficult uh, for me. If I did this all the time I probably would be better at it but um, basically you want to make a nice flat cut. So basically you want to carve a, well, this is just about uh, the width of the razor blade plus a half. Um, so I'm carving the rootstock to a point, get about half of it on that side, and then carve the other half. I try and start about the same or end up in the same place. Always better to start with more than you need. You can always make it shorter. It's difficult to make it longer. So that looks like it's a little bit longer than I normally work with. So I'll cut a little bit off. And of course the same uh, instructions are uh, on this is to make the point to what you can imagine as one cell thick. I can't imagine it at this point, so I'm gonna make it a little bit more narrow. A little bit more of a point going up, plus this side is not quite as clean of a cut yet. If I get a good cut on the first go through, then sometimes that's just it, all I need. But since this is not a graft that I use very often, I am just a little bit slow at it. like it just a tiny bit more. So that is the point there. And so right now I'm gonna find a, a scion that's gonna fit the bill. Actually 
had this one picked out, but I think we can go with a little bit larger one. A little bit larger diameter scion. They all sort of start looking the same after a little bit. Okay, I'll go back to... Where am I going to go? Okay, this is it. So my final selection. Now, when I wrap a scion for my own use, I uh, start about an uh, inch or so from the base and wrap the buddy tape starting from there up to the top. And um, then this has been in a very uh, tiny bit of water at the end. But you can see it discolors even from being in the uh, in the water for uh, less than an hour. Uh, so uh, it's good to get a fresh cut on that. So that's looking lovely. And then uh, we need to have a cut down the middle. And so you know, it's nice. I'm used to this. You know, the plant staying <laughs> staying there by itself when I make the cut, but. This is just a little bit different for me. Uh, so I gotta make sure that I, you know, am safe the way I'm doing this. I'm cutting very slowly. Uh, I'm sure somebody who does this graft all the time has like the perfect way of doing this quickly, uh, but that's not my story. Okay, it seems like it's going to be the, the right length. And, you know, what I'll do also, this, this side is a little more flexible, but I just bend it over a little bit with the razor blade so it will fit in nicely. Okay, so there you have, looks like a mini teepee or something. And just slide it right over. And it looks like we could have a little bit longer cut. Okay. Okay, that's, that's looking pretty good. I might have gotten a little bit too long of a cut, but that's all right. That's, so that's what it looks like before wrapping it. And you can tell even before I wrap it, before it, it starts growing, that this would be really good in a situation where you're afraid that water will get into the graft. Uh, you see, it, it's a natural shield for it. You know, the, this uh, scion is just protecting that union. Uh, so any rain would most of the rain would just splash right off. Um, now, the reason I don't use this particular graft very much is because of buddy tape. And buddy tape is so good at preventing um, moisture, rain, uh, water of any sort to getting into the graft uh, that I don't feel like it's worth the extra time and uh, aggravation to do this. But there are some types of, of tropical fruit trees where you actually cannot use buddy tape. Uh, they are sort of open air grafts, and uh, if you are dealing with some of those, then you definitely would consider this type of graft. Uh, but uh, in this case, you know, it, when I do a top cleft graft, I start wrapping at the bottom and work up. It's just exactly opposite with this graft because you want to. Ha um, you know, like have start with a uh, start in the beginning. This is the beginning of the the cut there, and you want to wrap from that point down. Uh, so this is gives it a little bit more strength when I twist the buddy tape. Uh, so that is pretty well in place.
And even though I've already used uh, buddy tape and used the twist, I'm going to use an elastic also. I just got into this much trouble. I want to make sure that I give it the most, the best possible opportunity to succeed. So, um, gosh, it's hard to stop <laughs> with my, my habit of starting at the bottom and working up. Uh, yes, so start at the, uh, you know, at, at the, the uh, let's see, the, the point where this, uh, of the, the V that you cut in the um, rootstock and then working down to the cut end uh, here of the scion. So, so that's it, a saddle graft. So there's a saddle graft. As I mentioned, it's a good graft uh, to use if you're grafting uh, something like uh, Mamoncio, where you, ca you can't use grafting tape with that. It has to be an open air kind of situation. Uh, there are some other types of tropical fruit that are picky also. Um, for me, it's not my favorite kind of graft. It takes me a long time to do it versus a top cleft graft. Um, but, uh, you know, it's, it's a good thing to try. Uh, what I would also recommend is if you don't happen to have buddy tape, uh, try this graft. Because the graft itself, the scion, because that is, is uh, sort of clamping over the point that you carve in the rootstock, protects the graft from water and excess moisture accumulation. So, uh, you know, we're lucky here. We, you know, have access to buddy tape and, you know, elastic strips and all sorts of things. But if you do not have those materials, try a, a um, saddle graft. It's basically a top cleft graft turned upside down and it might work out in your situation.